Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Sonic Touch episode six. I think that's right, isn't it, Gaz? Yep, this is number six. Number six, you, you might notice it's a bit different today and uh, there is a story behind this. We had fully intended <laughs> to uh, get together and do an in-studio shot. Uh, as you may know, it's Winternam next week uh, on Tuesday and when we were doing the podcast yesterday, Gaz was sneezing horribly and I'm... Uh, a little bit worried about catching a cold before I get on a transatlantic flight with a, a massive budget of, of stuff not to cock up through being ill. So I'm being a bit chicken about it all. But I want to say to Gaz, thank you for working with me on this. Uh, Gaz Williams, of course, is our co-host, songsurgeon.co.uk. Um, have you been having lots of uh, Christmas delights and fun with your iPad over the, the Christmas break? Well, yes, I have. But there's been a fair, fairly... Uh, by iPad standards, a uh, big lack of big, right. exciting releases coming out. But I guess that's to, to be expected. And as you mentioned, the, the NAM show, which is next week, uh, for those of you who don't know, that is like maybe in the music tech world, perhaps the biggest event, you know, for, for, for new product launches. And we'd expect to see uh, lots of iPad activity. I, I think last year you were there, Nick, weren't you? And there was a lot of uh, excitement around the iPad. Do you expect the same thing this year? Well, yeah, they've got this kind of iPad pavilion, which is, uh, sounds really amazing. Like they've built some fabulous sort of flown structure, but in fact, it's like a little sort of area of carpet. <laughs> it sounds grander <laughs> than it is, but it's a sort of uh, app ghetto, I suppose, which I'm suspecting is going to be getting bigger and bigger and perhaps expanding. So we're going to go and see a few people. We've already booked in to see a couple of people. So uh, I'm looking forward to some hardware and software. Um, I think the thing that happened last year is we started to see more and more people on board with this. And now I think it's just going to be racing ahead exponentially. OK, so, I mean, what do you think? Do we know anything that's going to be launched? Uh, I know of one thing, uh, and that's the Akai uh, the MPC, which is like a, the uh, music production... Um, uh, is it the MPC Fly? The MPC Fly. So you're now, we don't know, yeah, we don't know much about this at the moment. We know that it's going to be launching at NAMM, uh, but I think it's going to be like an MPC device, which is like uh, very popular with the hip-hop uh, hip community for sort of building beats and, and whatnot. Uh, and we know that the MPC Fly is going to be a specific... M uh, iPad related. Now, is that going to be hardware? Do we know this? Or is it just going to well, be a Well, I think version? most of the stuff, what they've done, uh, what they've actually done is they've released a series. The first one, the MP MPC Renaissance, has all of the hardware and everything. Then there's the MPC Studio, which I think is more control and works with software, more in the sort of machine vibe. And I think they've obviously taken a leaf out of the Native Instruments machine, because machine obviously has its own application for, for starting off beats. And so maybe we're going to see something along those lines. So I look forward to mm. checking that out. OK. Um, so also, IK Multimedia have got a whole bunch of new uh, hardware products out, I've noticed. Yes. They've, brought out, uh, they've brought out something which I wanted to invent myself, really, and that's like a stomp box the, uh, uh, that's basically just uh, an interface for... So you can basically put in your pedal board this particular pedal, which then connects to your iPhone or your iPad. So... Uh, Quite a cool little device, really. Um, I guess it was going to happen sooner or later. Uh, I think they're going to be showing that at NAMM. Um, they've also got like a DJ mixer that they're going to be launching as well, which is specifically designed for um, iOS devices. So some, some pretty cool stuff going on there from IK Multimedia. Also, Blue Microphones are going to be demonstrating their new microphone for iOS devices. Uh, I think it's just called the Digital Mic. Uh, the previous ones were called the Mikey. I'm not sure if this one is. Uh, I'd have to look into that one. But um, that's just like a microphone that directly attaches to the, uh, the port at the bottom of the iPad or the iPhone. And... Uh, I'm a big fan of blue microphones, so that looks good. And that's a stereo mic as well, so uh, that could be a really nifty device. And, of course, the long-awaited Apogee, Apogee mic is, uh, is going to be launching in February, which uh, hopefully we're going to get our hands on one of them to put it through its paces. And, again, that's just a microphone that connects to the port on the iPad and uh, promises Apogee high-quality conversion um, and... A, and theoretically a very good microphone as well so very, very exciting little device there i use the apogee jam which is like a guitar input uh, and i really like that as, a lot so i think if that's anything to go by quality wise that could be something to look out for right so next up we're going to take a look at some of our favorite apps from last year and gaz has got something quite cunning set up to allow us to do this 
Because, Gaz, we're not actually in the same room, are we? So uh, we're having to do something slightly differently to our usual setup. So it's a little, we're a little bit uh, disjointed. I'm, I'm sorry about that. So, Gaz, tell me, mm -hmm. tell me how you've got this set up. OK, well, I found a little app that's quite useful. It's for the iPhone. It's called iWeb Camera, and it allows your iPhone to be used as a web camera. So um, you just download the app. Uh, you have to download drivers for your computer, and then it just appears as a video source. So in uh, Skype, as the way we're communicating with each other, uh, I can now swap my camera over to my iPhone, and then wirelessly it acts as a uh, So as your a iPhone is now your webcam, and you're pointing that at your iPad to allow us to see this stuff. All right, I've got to see this. So uh, while Gaz okay. does his magic, uh, I'm going to fl flip to uh, a shot of me, and uh, Gaz will now... Uh, by the magic of wireless uh, technology, now we'll switch to his other camera. So here now is his iPhone pointing at his iPad. So what's the first one you've got for us, Gaz? OK, well, 2011, I think, is uh, an incredible year for iPhone apps. So, so we thought we would just do a little roundup of our favourites. So my top five in fifth place is Way Out Wears Synth X, which is a very simple synthesizer, but it's very expressive. Uh, and... Uh a new update's just come out for it, which has made it sort of uh, much more stable with iOS 5. Uh, so that's cool. So that's in fifth place. Excellent. In fourth place, this one is Sound Prism Pro, ah, which is uh, a controller, uh, which I use mainly as a controller. It does have some sounds built in. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, piece of software, especially when you use it in conjunction with your DAW and use it as a controller. So that's fourth place. Uh, in third place, we've got the terrific Loopy, which, uh, which is like a loop station type uh, uh, affair, but with real great depth. And, you can, and it really plays well with other apps as well. It looks very uh, beautiful as well, isn't it? Really nice. Yeah, nice. it's a, ter a terrific, terrific, really, really great piece of software. Um, big thumbs up. Um, in second place, we've got the remarkable Animoog. From, ah, yes, of course. I know you're very fond of this. It does sound great, doesn't it? It sounds fantastic. It's brilliant to use. It's really inspiring. And I think, you know, uh, they've done an awesome job, really, of, uh, of taking that real great heritage and doing something that really lives up to the name. So, finally, in first place, you probably guessed it if you know me, is... Thumb Jam! Aha, thumb Jam, of course. Yes, Thumb Jam, which I think is just the most incredible piece of software. I highly recommend it. Uh, with its only, my only caveat is, is that it only does it in portrait mode and not landscape. So my That's nice little it, display. Yeah. yeah, it's on its side there. <laughs> I must say, I, I, I agree and I concur with a lot of those. I know Thumb Jam, um, after we did our little piece on it, I was just blown away. They've done so much to enable you to control and, you know, it's, it's just a, such a fantastic piece of software. Great interface design, really good use of the whole touch kind of uh, interface, really, wouldn't you say? Oh, I, com I completely agree, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think where these apps that I've chosen, I think really sort of stand out is in their in the way that you can integrate them into professional working situations and they've all they all demonstrate that with their uh, with various kind of options and functionality right nicely done well um unfortunately i don't have uh I don't have iOS 5 on my device, which means I can't do that fancy application switching because you had all of those resident in memory at the same time, which was no mean feat. But what I do have is uh, my iPad here. And the first thing I wanted to say is IK Oscillator. I haven't, this is in no particular order, I must say. It's just, you know, it's just as they come. And IK Oscillator definitely gets uh, my vote as one of the great apps from last year, even though I suppose it's only really made... Did it come out last year or the year before, just? I, I forget now, but it got an update last year anyway. <laughs> so, no, it, yeah, it did. Uh, both versions came out. Ah, OK. 2011. Yeah. OK, and next up, uh, I'm going to go to... Ah, yeah, this one. This was uh, the Yamaha set list which was uh, uh, something that we covered in one of the sonic touch episodes it's a great little uh, piece of kit because basically it allows you to design a set of songs and uh set program changes 
for different scenes within a song. It can have different bank changes, different MIDI channels, different devices, different ports. A just really brilliant way of perhaps controlling a larger MIDI rig, or you know, perhaps even be useful for somebody who is a tech by the side of the stage who's just changing patches and things for somebody else. And you've also got this uh, ability to like put lyrics in and little images and aid memoirs and things that you mustn't forget to do during the set. So I really like that one as well. Of course, uh, we can't really go too far wrong with uh, GarageBand from Apple. Admittedly, uh, pff, no, did that come out last year? It seems like such, it, it's yeah. moved so fast, yeah. yet it seems like it's been you know more than a year. But GarageBand, because that really showed, it sort of paved the way of how yeah. to make a really good audio app for the iPad device. And that's something that you know Apple really did kind of hold a torch up. I won't bother launching that. Uh, and of course, um, let me see, I've also got Nano Studio here somewhere, if I can find mm -hmm. it. Oh, once again, I don't have the luxury of your uh, folders and what have you. Nano Studio, there we go. <laughs> and it gives me an opportunity to play, it gives me an opportunity to play a tune that I, uh, I composed on it, hopefully. So, uh, auto save, uh, let's have a look, see what that, what that sounds like. So, um, if I go, there we go. go back to the song very much of a sort of door kind of look I love this and I think the synths in it just have oops <laughs> try and do too many things at once the thing is is the synths <laughs> in it and the ambience and the, the effects they're just they just really suit my particular vibe I love all that space and width and stereoness uh, really enjoyed that and of course uh, there's also touch OSC uh, if I launch that now I'm not sure if I've done it. I think I may have set it up so that it's it's hooked up to my uh, copy of Logic. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah, there we go. So I've got a Logic session, which if I switch to this, you can see my Logic session. Hit play. You'll probably recognize this as one of my demo tunes that I use for almost everything. So I go back to my, oops, I'll get there in the end. <laughs> Allows me to, uh, there's a really nice logic control. I've got channel strip. I've got, uh, I can plug in the, the EQ, all this other stuff. Perhaps we'll go into that in more depth in another issue. It's, it's very much along the same lines as the Lima. Uh, it's much cheaper. It has different configurations, but very another very nice system. So it's, it's programmable, isn't it, Nick? You can design it like Lima. You can yeah. decide what it shows. There is an editor that comes with it that allows you to set it up. I, I think the Lima editor seems to have the edge ever so slightly, as far as I can tell. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll look into it a bit more deeply, and perhaps we can cover it in more depth in another episode. So Gaz has got uh, a couple of synths he wants us to take a look at as well. So let's uh, join him now, uh, and he can tell us a bit more about them. So what is it that you want to show us then, Gaz? Tell us. <laughs> well... Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there hasn't been a huge amount of big releases in the last uh, the last few weeks, I guess, with Christmas and whatnot. But uh, two things have come to my attention, which are both very interesting. A, a couple of synthesizers. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is called Grain Science. Now, that's a very odd name, uh, but it's uh, it's a granular synthesizer, and it's um, it's, a, it's it. I think why I really like it is it's got a beautiful beautiful design um, so i'm going to flick over now to my camera and i will fill for you while you do that oh that was a very quick switch actually it <laughs> seems to be getting faster it must have a better connection so let's have a look at it there I mean, uh, we will say uh, just apologies for the quality of this now uh, for, uh, just purely because we're having to do this remotely it's a little bit more uh, we, we like to kind of uh, get the imagery a little better than this but um uh, hopefully you'll be able to get a really good idea of what's going on here so tell us okay uh, okay so grain science uh, um I think partly why I was mentioning it is because it, it, it really uses the touchscreen idiom uh, in, in a very nice way. Uh, for instance, I can like pan through the different modules uh, that's, that's within it with my finger. And also lots of things, they directly respond to sort of being touched upon. Like, so for instance, the, uh, the envelope, you know, I could adjust it with controllers, but I could also adjust it by... Uh, dragging on them themselves which so i like to see that i like to see that kind of um it, uh but but what makes it an, an interesting synthesizer is, is oh, we've lost you can think yeah. of it sorry yeah you can think of it almost like a like a sampler with um two what's called grain units and they're either side of the envelope and uh, they, they they describe it as a little bit like um as though it's like two two record decks either side of the mixer so 
Um, within grain unit one, you yeah. could load up a sample, and in grain unit two, you could load up another sample, and then from those samples that you could do some, uh, you could do some sort of interesting sort of granular kind of things. Now, so granular, just, just granular, just a, yeah, taking short pieces of yeah. sand. Yeah, yeah, it's taking the sample and then it's breaking it up into its component pieces but you know the, now they're very small we're talking sort of just a few milliseconds and then you can rearrange them uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna show a demonstration of this now if i well there's two ways i could get a sample into this i could press and hold on the uh microphone icon pressing and holding and then so i've actually sampled microphone icon pressing and holding so i could just sample directly in like so um or i could press here and then i could choose a whole bunch of uh uh, I could bring samples in from lots of different places. And it's very nice because it lets me bring them in from different uh, other, uh, other software that I might have installed or from a Dropbox or, you know, it get lots of options there. So I'm going to bring in a sample that I made last night. Oh, it sounds like a marimba or a thumb piano. It, it's a thumb piano, yeah. And these are the great sort of things to play with. Um, so what, what I could do now is if I change the mode into kind of chaos, what that will do is uh, I'm going to increase the grain sizes and then it's playing back the different components in all sorts of different random orders. Now, I'm not sure we'll be able to see that very well with this screen at the moment, but uh, one of the nice design features of Graham Science is if you touch on any of the controls, it gives you like a little speedometer dial in the left. When you touch that, changes the resolution of the dial as you're adjusting it from high speed to sort of like a slow speed so it's really nice so you you, you leave it on high speed for making your big adjustment and then just tap the the, the speed adjustment and then it it, it lets you dial in a fine tune uh, oh, very nice, nice touch, slick yeah. bit of programming yeah also a lot of the controls also on the other side they have a uh they have a little uh icon which you, as you touch it it opens up a little window and that window allows you to apply an lfo to the parameter that you've just clicked on and the LFO could be set to be over time or it could um, sorry the mod it could be a modulation over time or an LFO or a combination of both and the thing that's really nice about that is there's almost like an unlimited amount of them virtually every control allows you to sort of apply this LFO kind of approach uh, so it means that sounds can take lots you can put lots and lots of movement into the sounds mm. okay so I'm going to go I'm going to load in the sound now, one of the presets, just to show you the kind of sounds you could expect from this. Uh, let's just look, load one in at random. They've got quite a nice organic quality to them. Here's an interesting thing, the glide option, it allows you to go into detect mode. And that's quite nice, because rather than just having it glide all the time, as I play chords, it doesn't glide, but if I slide any note, then it will do, it'll apply the glide. So, nice little, nice little touch there. Sweet. Um, one of the things as well, just I'm going to pan through all of here, we've got our effects units here, and our effects units, um, they, they're in uh, series, and then I can choose from quite a large selection, um, and they sound pretty cool as well. Uh, so, say for instance, I brought in a flanger, uh, so, so I've got a flanger in the first slot. The other three slots uh, are, are in effect bypassed. But what's really nice is that all the controls of the effects, they've got this window again, so you can apply your oh, nice so you, LFOs. So you could do the modulator. That, that, is that the kind of, that's the real, the, the real nub of it. It allows you to make these huge and or, or long or short changes so you can get really evolution to them. That's absolutely right. And then if we pan across further, we come to, well, it's, here's like a kind of reverb section. And then there's the connection mapper. And the connection mapper allows you to sort of pretty much just assign things to different things. So uh, like uh, if I had a MIDI controller as, uh, attached, I could, I could map the controls there. But I was going to show you in the final page, we've got like four chaos type pads. XY pads, which right. are XY pads which are fully assignable. But there's another thing here, which I've not seen before, that they could either display them as, as pads or as wheels. Oh. So the wheels, you know, so you could have like, and these wheels are kind of either, you know, they will reset or they'll stay put depending on how you configure them. So uh, nice little thing there. So it gives you plenty of hands-on um, and, and very, very easy to map. You just simply go to the connection mapper, 
you find the you find the the parameter that you want to that you want to adjust like for instance i might choose grain scrub and i choose from grain scrub pad one x and i've um i've mapped that now i'm going to turn off the auto reset so that one stays put as i change it so now so play the thing i can move i can effectively scrub through the sample and that would be cool if i bring in another sample that i made yesterday of a music box and then uh let's quickly bring that in hit the thing okay so is it actually fun to program i mean do you find you're kind of because you, most of these things you know i've found with ipad uh, type devices is it can be quite laborious you know it's not much fun to dial in lots of parameters but this seems to have kind of got over that to a certain degree it's, I mean, I'm not sure how well it's coming across on the video, but I think it's a very elegant design. And that elegant design sort of lends itself to being, you know, very enjoyable to work with. Um, and, and the fact that you can kind of jump around it very quickly. And uh, it's got beautiful, it's just got, it's just got beautiful graphical kind of appearance, really. Right. Uh, and, 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 and also, because it uses granular synthesis, which isn't the most common sort of method, really, uh, it, it does mean that if you play around with it, you can make some quite unusual and interesting sounds. So um, what's its forte, do you think? What, where does it really uh, excel at? What sort of sounds would you say? Uh, certainly atmospherics. Um, uh, you know, it, it's in fact, if you go through a lot of the patches, it tends it tends to be more around sort of uh, atmospheric sounds. Um, uh, but there is there is one last thing I'll just quickly mention is that there's a quite a nice. Um, well, a, you've got an arpeggiator, oh. um, but also you can turn this into a like a step sequencer. But it's a really it's quite a pleasant one. So if I turn this on and then. Basically, these these red things you set the kind of pitch, <laughs> like an. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Tap, mutes them. Again, it's got this. It's almost. It's a very spacey quality. It reminds me a little bit of the synths in Nano mm. uh, in Nano Studio. Actually, that sort of organic, um, sort of tr ambient kind of vibe to it. Yeah, and uh, some of it reminds me a little bit of um, Omnisphere, some of the sounds, with a bit of an organic quality to them. So, uh, uh, yes, very interesting synthesizer, though. I think, uh, you know, and I think the designer should be commended, really, for sort of putting some quite innovative approaches, really, to the... Uh, to the whole idiom. So Grain Science uh, is available now. Uh, it's about six pounds, well, it is six pounds 99. It's also, so it's gonna be around the 11, 12 bucks, we think. The one thing uh, that you must remember, though, that is only available for iOS 5, is that right? Because I'm uh, still on 4.3 or 4.4, because my iPad got jailbroken and I can't, <laughs> I can't update the OS <laughs> on my lap. It's a mess, anyway. I don't wanna go into all of that, but uh, that's why Gaz has been looking at it. But it did sound really nice, I mean, obviously, um, check it out for yourself because via Skype and in mono, it's not going to give it the best. But th those look some really interesting synthesis methods and, and interface ideas. Mm. That brings me to the next one I'd like to talk about, actually, because now it's a completely different approach. It's called TC11. And I think why I'd like to mention TC11 is because it takes the idea of the iPad and what the iPad is in terms of the, de the, the physical device. It turns it into something most peculiar uh i should say why it's just i've loaded it in it's just starting making some bleeps uh, one of the reasons why is we've talked about some of the apps in the past which use the accelerometer for adjusting um various uh parameters this one takes that to a, a much deeper level uh there is a I think actually only the iPad 2 this is pertinent to, but uh, it will use the compass within it. So it will actually be able to orient itself to magnetic north and you can actually use that as a modulation source, the compass. Uh, also, you can, and also the gyroscope as well as the accelerometers. So it will recognize rotation as well as tilt, tilt oops, as well as tilting it. And also this business where it can uh, align itself to, um, Magnetic with the compass. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, are you going to now, uh, while I cover you, you're going to switch to a shot of it on your iPad so we can uh, we can. I 
see it in, in operation. Yep. So... Uh, is it a port? It uses wow, a... That, that's a very uh, <laughs> blank-looking <laughs> screen. A, a very minimalist design. Mm. And we can see it doesn't display the notes, as far as I am aware, in, any of the, in, any, in a traditional sense. So there's no kind of piano keyboard layout at all. And the reason for this is it, it's really all about exploring completely new paradigms for playing uh, a synthesizer. So this one, as I play a note, I play another one and another one, they all move. So you can kind of... Wow, it's very pretty. So, so uh, now if I was to load in a new patch, it tells you on the right-hand side, uh, you can't see it here too well, but um, it tells you what the controllers used are. So as you, as you, as you pan through it, you know, you, you kind of look, you can, you can sort of um, bear that in mind. Uh, and some of these are interesting, that you have to spin the notes to kind of make them sound. And, it, and the different touches, the, the, the span between your fingers, can kind of wow. give it, 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 informa it information. It does rather look like we're, we're going to have to learn another, yet another uh, <laughs> <laughs> sort of keyboard layout to get the best out of this, or is it, more, is it really more gestural? When you actually dig deep in, obviously there's a lot of patches. But if we were to look at the the the, um, the, uh, the layout of it, it's got it's got a very deep, comprehensive synthesizer with many modules and quite a quite a considerable depth to it. Uh, really? What? Who makes it? What's it called? How much is it? I need to know these things. <laughs> okay, uh, it's called TC11, made by Bitshape, and it's. Quite expensive in iOS terms. It's uh, twenty pounds wow. ninety nine. Wow, uh, that's a lot, isn't it? Yes, it is. But then you know, when you actually start looking into it, um, you know, the there is a considerable amount of depth to it. So I think a lot of work's been put into it, and it, you know, it's a. I think it's not for the faint-hearted either. I think you know, if you want to do, really explore quite a deep synthesis uh, process, and again, you know, explore these interesting new paradigms for. Uh, interacting with it, then I think this is this is definitely a, you know quite a contender in that field. So, does it allow you to do um, you know control using this great interface to control external MIDI stuff, or is it all pretty much in the box? Um, as far as I'm aware, it's just in the box at the moment. I don't know if that's something that's going to change, and I apologise if it's something that I've overlooked. But it does seem to be very much about it, you know, a, a, a standalone thing really. Um, and I would, and I would say that if you were going to tim tinker with it, it is, you know, it's probably not for the faint-hearted, really. I think right. it's a, it's quite a professional, quite a professional tool, I think. Okay, so that's uh, Gaz's two picks. Um, we're now, sadly, I think, towards the end of the show. Uh, we've managed to pull it together pretty well, considering we've had to do it remotely and with a whole new set of technologies. So I want to say uh, thank you very much, Gaz, uh, for for joining us uh, remotely via your Bristol studio, and. Um, that's it for Sonic Touch episode six. As ever, your comments are always welcome below. And don't forget, we're going to be bringing you all the latest news from the NAM show from Wednesday or Thursday next week. And there will be a slight break in transmission, obviously, because we'll be flying back. But we do hope to get back on it. And uh, Gaz, if you see anything that comes out you want to go and check, just, just send me a text. I will. I'm going to be keenly, keenly following the, uh, the updates coming on Sonic State. OK, well, that's it for this show. We'll see you later. Thanks for